Welcome to Kotlin for Java Developers. I will be referring to this as a course because I want to, you to watch the videos in order because most of the videos will build on the previous videos. Anyway, in this course, you're going to leverage your Java knowledge to get up to speed quickly with Kotlin, so that brings us to who this course is for. This isn't a beginner's programming course. I assume that you have some experience with Java, so I won't be going over basic concepts like what is a variable, what does encapsulation mean, what is a conditional statement, and etc. We're going to hit the ground running, so if you've coded in Java, this is the course for you. Now, you don't have to be a Java expert and know everything there is to know about Java, because frankly, few developers do. But, we, but you do need to know more than Hello World, and you should understand object-oriented concepts like encapsulation, polymorphism, inheritance, and obstruction. All that good stuff. Now, if you don't know any programming language, or if this is your first programming course you're taking, or if, on, if the only Java program you've ever written is Hello World, you should take a Java course before doing this one. Now, if you don't have experience with Java, but you do ha with another object-oriented language, and so you understand object-oriented concepts, you'll probably be able to muddle along in this course. So let's go over what you're going to cover in this course. First, I'll tell you a bit about the Kotlin language, and then we'll go. Oh, we'll, we're going to go over some quick differences between Kotlin and Java. For example, you don't have to use semicolons at the end of statements in Kotlin. I bet you'll all be crying over that. We'll also code the classic Hello World application, because let's face it, it wouldn't be a programming course if we didn't do that. But on top of that, just that simple application will allow me to point out a few key differences between Kotlin and Java. And after that, we're going to look at variable declarations in Kotlin because you'll see they're quite different than the way that you declare variables in Java. After that, we're going to take a look at data types in Kotlin and we'll also see how Kotlin protects against null pointer exceptions. You might have heard that you can't get a null pointer exception in Kotlin. That's not quite true, but it's pretty hard to get them. After that, we're going to take a look at the object-oriented topics, we're going to look at classes and how you declare them. We're going to look at methods and functions, yes, functions. We're going to look at how constructor, constructors are handled in Kotlin. This is one area where it's very different from how they are handled in Java, and it does cause some developers difficulty when they first start working with Kotlin. So we'll look at primary and secondary constructors. We'll also look at enums. Uh, we're going to look at the singleton in factory patterns and how your code and how you code those in Kotlin and other good stuff. Then we're going to take a look at loops. I say loops, but in reality, it will be focused on the for loop because the other loops are pretty much the same in Kotlin. But there are been sig but there have been significant changes to the for loop in Kotlin from what you can do in Java. Now related to this is a feature in Kotlin called ranges. So we're going to take a look at them as well. After that, we're going to take a look at lambda expressions and also collections and generics. Now lambdas and collections aren't that much different from what they are in Java, but you can do more with them in Kotlin. Kotlin has enhanced lambdas and collections. Now for generics. We're going to cover variants, that's both covariance and contravariance, and again, this is another topic that some developers find it hard to wrap their head around. So we're going to spend some time on both of those concepts. Now after that, we're going to take a look at IO, more specifically specifically file IO because this is where Kotlin has added some convenient functions that we can use when we want to read files. In particular, it's kind of focused on enhancing reading text files. So we'll, look, we'll take a look at that 
and then we're going to look at Java interoperability. Kotlin has d been designed from the ground up to be interoperable with Java and so you can call Kotlin from Java and you can call Java from Kotlin. Most of the time when you do this you don't have to do anything special but there are c cases and areas where you do have to do something a little different or where you might want to influence the behavior of the Kotlin, com Kotlin compiler when you know that you're going to be mixing Kotlin and Java. And so we're going to take a look at all of that and there are going to be challenges along the way where you'll get a chance to practice what you've learned. So as, so as you can see, we have a lot to cover, so let's get started. This wouldn't really be a coding course if we didn't have their traditional hello world application. So that's what we'll be doing, um, creating a hello world application. So if you have a project open, you're going to want to go to file, new, project, and this will open up a new project window and you're going to want to come down and click on Kotlin. Um, and then you also want to select JVM on the right side. Uh, the left side will say Kotlin, right side will say JVM. Uh, this is because we're going to be targeting the JVM or Java Virtual Machine. Um, so yeah, if you don't have a project open and let's say it's your first time creating a, um, a pro uh, first time opening IntelliJ, you're going to see a small window and there should be only a few options. One of those will be able to, uh, one of those options will say create new project or something along those lines. You don't want to click on that and you should be brought up with a menu that looks like this and click Kotlin and JVM. After that we're going to hit next. We're going to name our project. I'm going to be naming it Hello World. Okay, and select the folder you want it to be in, and then the project SDK. Um, all this, more settings, you can just minimize that because we don't need it. Um, and then you're going to want to hit finish. Um, it'll come up with a pop-up. I will say this window, or you can open it in a new window. Alright, you can see it configured Kotlin down there. I'm just going to X out of that. And you can see by opening this uh, module node that it created a source package, but that's all it created for us. A pretty empty, bare bones project. Um, in this source package, we're going to create a package, another package, com.noahendrickson.hello world. Um, you can name this package me your name dot hello world um, but I'm pretty sure you're accustomed to package naming which is the same in Kotlin or very similar all right and then in this package we're going to create a Kotlin file or class and you can see here that we can either create a file or a class um, we're going to click on that and it has some options but we're just in the step of file and um, you can see here that this is um, different than Java and we can name it hello world or main or whatever you want to name it. So it's a good time to talk about what happens when you compile a Kotlin program. The Kotlin compiler, which is called Kotlin C, takes files with the .kt extension as input and generates bytecode as .class files. And at that point, the .class files are equivalent to java.class files. So essentially, when you're working with Java, uh, the Java compiler um, compiles your .java files into .class files, and you are working when you're working with Kotlin. The Kotlin compiler compiles it down to .class files as well. From that point forward, those .class files look the same to the JVM. So when you run them on the JVM, the only difference um, that's an important difference is that when you're running a Kotlin application you're going to need the Kotlin runtime library. So if you're going to distribute your Kotlin application, you also have to distribute the Kotlin runtime library. Okay, so now let's write our Hello World application. All right, so again, this is a very simple program and trivial application, but we're just gonna type main, hit enter, 
you can see it creates a fun main method. Um, this is the main method, and we're just going to say print ln, and then it's a method, or actually it's a function. Um, we'll, I will be using method and function inter interchangeably, um, just because I have one foot in one foot in Kotlin and one foot in Java, so they're about they're very similar. Um, but we're just going to say hello world exclamation point and as you can see here pretty simple we can run it just to make sure it works um, and as you can see here it prints hello world to the console alright so <clears throat> that's all for today guys as you can see it was a very simple application um, but before we wrap up this uh, this episode I just wanted to let you guys know, if you haven't noticed already, that this is not in a class. Um, we don't have to make a class, call it, let's say, hello world, and in this class, put the main function, right? Um, so, this is what we call a top level function, um, so we don't need a class. Um, when you're working with Kotlin, you can create functions that are not in a class, such as um, another function. All right, and let's um, print line hello, right? Um, so as you can see here, we can call this method or function sorry rather from another from the main method and both of these functions aren't in a class right but um, Kotlin still compiles we can still run it um, as you can see it says hello and then hello world right so pretty um, simple stuff but um what Kotlin is doing under the covers, right? Kotlin wants to be more concise, and we don't want to, if we want a main method, we don't want to write out a whole class just to write the main method. So what Kotlin is doing when it compiles this code is it's creating a class under under the covers, right? When it compiles, it's creating a class um, because it's running on the JVM. So it has to have, be in a class. Um, but Kotlin will do that for us, so there's no need to um, do it up here. Alright, so I just wanted to make that small point if you were wondering why we had a function and it wasn't in a class. But um, of course, we'll talk about this a lot more in the upcoming videos. Alright, well, I hope you enjoyed this um, episode. And uh, this is my first tutorial series on YouTube. So give me a break if uh, it wasn't up to Cody's standards. But um, hopefully, I can step into the role of Cody and. Um, start delivering some more fluent and um, more co cohesive um, videos and hopefully the quality will just uh, will be just the same all right so I'll see you guys in the next episode um, till then keep practicing bye